Hello, Internet. Today, we're going to be tackling one of the most pervasive and important topics debated amongst the guitar community, which is how to get your guitar to shut up and how to deal with that really annoying 60 cycle hum that seems to haunt most guitar players when they plug their guitar into an amp especially if there's a pedal board involved. We wanted to put together a video that will go through really any variable I could think of that you might want to check out if this is an issue that you're dealing with. And hopefully this will help you and help us get rid of that really annoying buzz. So what is this hum or buzzing that I've been talking about? Just in case you still don't know what I mean, this is what I mean. I'm not even playing anything and already I'm hearing so much noise coming through my amp and it's a problem that so many people encounter and you know we just want to address it today. Um, it's also come up a lot for me as a you know touring and recording musician and I've had to try to find you know different ways to troubleshoot and uh, deal with this problem. That's why I like to sort of systematically go through all the different possible causes starting with the amp. And the best way to isolate and figure out if your amp is the culprit of all the noise is just unplug everything from it. If you notice that the crazy noise persists even when you unplug everything from your amp, then it's very likely that your amp is the reason. And at that point, unless you're skilled in you know, sort of engineering and taking things apart and putting them together, I might recommend taking it to a professional because it could be something with the internal circuitry of the amp, the tubes, you know, I personally am not an expert in this field, and I would take it to a professional if this were the case. Something else I want to point out. If you have a phone and you place it on your amp, sometimes you'll hear some crazy noises from the electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation coming from your phone that can be transmitted through the amp. Uh, and luckily, again, right now we're not hearing it, but in the past, oh, there we go. <laughs> That's from my phone on top of the amp. So I would strongly recommend not putting your phone or laptop or anything like that on your amp. Maybe even just turn it on airplane mode and then you don't have to worry. So before we get into the pedal board, which is often the biggest culprit behind the noise, I just want to talk about isolating your guitar as a variable. So now that we've figured out the amp is not an issue, let's figure out if it's, if it's the guitar. And something really important to take note of is if you are hearing a lot of buzz, and then you roll the volume off your guitar and you're hearing no buzz, then your guitar probably isn't, you know, the sole uh, culprit, you know, behind the noise. Because sometimes I've had uh, an input jack loose on the guitar and even when I roll the volume off, I hear this crazy buzzing noise. And that's an indication that there's something going on either with the input jack or with the internal circuitry of the guitar. And I've had both of those instances be true. But when it comes to the input jack, sometimes it can be a little loose. Like actually the input jack on this guitar is a little bit loose. In that case, you probably just want to take some sort of wrench or something and just tighten it up. Another thing to consider is if your setup was totally quiet one day and then the next day you tried it and everything was set up the same way, you started hearing some crazy buzzing noises going on, it might actually be the cable that you're using. It's very common for cables to start to deteriorate after They've been used a lot. Uh, the shielding in the cable can start to break apart and deteriorate. I don't think that you need to get the most expensive possible cable out there, because I think at a certain point, all higher end cables are pretty similar in their quality. But I would probably avoid cables that are overly cheap, because it's very possible that they haven't been made with the same sort of materials intended to prevent additional noise. So even if you've gone through all these steps and you've discovered that the amp isn't the issue, the cable isn't the issue, and your guitar is pretty good, as in the buzzing stops when you turn the volume all the way down, it is still worth considering, you know, the pickups on your guitar. Because even if the issue isn't the guitar itself, certain pickups are noisier than others. The most notoriously noisy pickups are single coils, just like what I have on this guitar here. It's definitely going to end up being quite a bit noisier than guitars that use other pickups, like humbuckers, which are designed to be less noisy because they have two coils designed to buck the hum, so to speak. Or even pickups like EMGs, you know, pickups that are designed to function, you know, in high gain situations. Um, and be less noisy. But, you know, sometimes 
you love the sound of single coils and there's nothing you want to change about your setup, uh, so you are just going to keep using single coils. An example of that being me, because I love the sound of single coils even though they're noisy. The most important thing is to just be aware that that is a thing that happens to a lot of people and just consider the fact that some pickup positions are less noisy than others. For example, my neck pickup seems to be a lot noisier than position two. So it's worth trying it out. And again, it doesn't mean avoid using guitars like that or pickups that are noisy or pickup selections that are noisy altogether, but just be aware that they can be noisy. I'm actually gonna pick up my Duo Sonic right over there and this guitar will help me demonstrate, you know, the difference between single coils and humbuckers, because this guitar happens to have both. So here are the humbuckers, here's the single coil. <laughs> obviously, both settings are extremely noisy, uh, but you can probably hear that the single coil setting is even noisier. It's interesting. So now I'm just gonna switch on back to my other guitar to demonstrate another important point that you can try to eliminate that hum. All right, so this is something really interesting to consider. The pickups in the guitar are magnets that are designed to pick up, you know, electromagnetic radiation coming from the vibration of your strings. But of course, they'll also pick up, you know, other types of you know, magnetic forces in the room around you as well. And sometimes there are certain parts of the room that will be quieter than others. Notice how the buzzing changes as I change, you know, where my guitar is. It's quieter here than it is here. Something I've discovered after recording in the studio for a while is very often uh, with the producer, once we've figured out the guitar part, gotten the effects and everything, the last step will be figuring out which way in the room I should face to get the quietest possible guitar signal. And that usually leads to me sort of sitting in the corner uh, with my back to the rest of the room, because that just seems to work. But that's something to figure out for you, um, especially if you're recording. Okay, now it's time to move on to possibly the biggest culprit of noise in your signal chain, and that is the pedal board. And there are so many variables to address, because imagine every time you add a pedal to your board and you know it's power supply and the cables to connect it to other pedals and everything, you're just adding more variables that could potentially go wrong. So the first thing to consider, the longer your chain is from your guitar leading to your amp, the more potential there is for noise to build up. This is all one big circuit. And just consider, you know, the more pedals you have on your board, the longer the signal is. So I would strongly suggest only having pedals on your board that you actually really need. And then there's less potential for excessive noise to build up. So once you've figured out what pedals you want to have on your board, you need to take note of some very essential information. It's always important to know, you know the voltage requirements of the pedal you're using, whether it requires nine volts, 18 volts, etc. It's important to know its current draw, as in how much current it needs to power it. And it's really important to know whether the pedal is analog or digital. For example, what I have on my board here, this TC electronic tailspin vibrato requires nine volts, and it has a current draw of 15 MA, or 15 milliamps. So the reason it's so important to know all of this information about your pedals is firstly, to know how to power them. If you're using a pedal board, Though they unfortunately can be quite expensive a lot of the time, getting an isolated power supply can be really great for, you know, trying to get rid of any unwanted noise. Like, for example, the One Spot Pro. And this isn't an ad. This is just an example of an isolated power supply that you can use. You know, each of these outlets clearly shows, you know, what kind of pedals you can plug into it, you know, depending on the voltage requirements and current draw requirements of your pedal. Again, see, that's why it was important to take note of that, as I said a few minutes ago. And once you know that, you'll know where to plug in each pedal. 
And each petal will then be receiving an isolated you know, power supply um, to it. Underpowering or overpowering your petals clearly is a situation you want to avoid because it will cause unwanted noise, as I've said multiple times, and also it will damage your petals. You know, if this is maybe out of your price range or you have a smaller petal board, this is, again, an isolated power supply that will, you know, power one petal. If, let's say, you have a very small pedal board, you could consider getting a few of these. But again, unfortunately, that can be a pricier approach, too. But I just wanted to let you know that that is an option. So the daisy chain is the perfect example of what happens when you don't isolate power supplies. Uh, because what happens is, if you supply power to more than one pedal using you know, a non-isolated power supply, you're essentially linking all of the pedals together in one circuit. And that can increase the possibility for unwanted noise for many reasons. So long story short, as much as you can, if you want to avoid unwanted noise, you might want to consider avoiding daisy chaining, isolated power supply, all that good stuff. But that being said, sometimes you have to use a daisy chain. You might be on a certain budget that you know doesn't allow you to get um, an isolated power supply, or you might run out of outlets on here if you have a really big rig. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to use a daisy chain, there are a few things to take note of. Some pedals actually cannot be daisy chained. Um, an example of this would be the TC Electronic Polytune that I have on my board. There was a long period of time where I used to daisy chain that pedal, actually, and my rig was so noisy no matter where I went until I did a bit of research and I found out that a lot of other people had had the same experience. And this is one example of a pedal that you just really can't daisy chain. Um, otherwise, it's going to be really, really noisy. And there are other pedals out there like that. Typically, the best pedals to daisy chain are those that have a low current draw. And also, pedals that are not inherently noisy. So what this means is I'll almost never daisy chain overdrive pedals or fuzz pedals or anything like that. Because, like I said earlier, when you're daisy chaining and not isolating a pedal's power supply, you're essentially linking all those pedals together in a circuit. And if one of the pedals in the daisy chain is noisy, it's very likely that it's going to make the whole thing way noisier and all of the pedals are going to be affected in some way. So now that you've figured out which pedals to daisy chain, let's say I am only daisy chaining two pedals. I have this plugged into the power supply. I have this plugged into my vibrato, this plugged into the tremolo, and I have all of these left unused, I would strongly suggest covering the ends with electrical tape. Um, and in doing so, you're going to avoid ground loops. See, this is a big thing that a lot of guitar players talk about. So a ground loop is when two or more devices are connected to a common ground. And obviously, this can happen if you leave a whole bunch of tips of your daisy chain just flying loose and you know touching all sorts of metal under your board or other cables and whatever. But this is also important to consider um, in the layout of your board. So I would make sure that your pedals, as much as possible, are not touching. The cables are not touching. If you do have pedals or cables on your board that are touching each other, um, this might not be the best example because I clearly have a lot of space on my board. I could space things out a lot. But if things got really crowded, you could take a little electrical tape, maybe roll it up like this, and just wedge it between the cables or the pedals that are touching. So the last two things you can try if all of this is still not eliminating that unwanted buzzing and hum in your sound is to use a power conditioner. Because when you plug into you know, an outlet in a building, you don't really know how much stuff is on that circuit. So by using a power conditioner, you can help clean up you know, the power that is going to your amp, your pedal board, all that. And the very last thing you can try, last resort, use a noise gate. And if you don't know what that is, like any gate, it lets certain things through. It blocks other things from going through. And in the case of this noise gate here, if we dial it in just right, it should prevent the humming from coming through. And it should still allow the sound of my guitar to come through. Fantastic. Now, if you've tried all of these options and the issue still persists, 
just know that you're not alone. We at Guitario, as you can see, have tried pretty much everything we can think of, but you know, sometimes it could be an issue with the building you're in. It could be a whole bunch of things that are kind of out of your control, but I hope that this video shows you that there are a lot of things you can control, and in the right circumstances, you can take the power back in your own hands and actually eliminate the hum completely in the right circumstances. Please leave a comment down below if this is an issue you struggle with, you know, any horror stories you've had with unwanted buzzing in your rig, and you know, what you've done to deal with that. And, you know, hopefully we can all learn from each other. Maybe we'll learn a little something from you and your comment about, you know, something maybe we haven't tried yet. And I hope that this video helped you. Have a wonderful, noise-free day.